welcome to Hogwarts. Hi, I'm Sarah Roots, Executive Vice President of Worldwide Studio Tours and Retail at Warner Brothers. Welcome to Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, The Making of Harry Potter. I'm standing in our new expansion, which opened in Easter 2019. You can see behind me the Ukrainian Iron Belly Dragon. The production designer from the films wanted the dragon to look just as he did at the beginning of the Deathly Hallows, where he's trying to escape out of this space. He's fantastic, isn't he? And behind him are some of our expansions that we've made to enhance the visitor experience here, including a big food hall with the Chocolate Frog Cafe with themed uh, Harry Potter food items and a fabulous new shop that we'll be having a look at later. I'm here at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour in London where people are getting very excited about the opening of the Gringotts Wizarding Bank, including this guy. He's a big dragon. Look at the smile on his face. Delighted. <laughs> Me, Tom Price, and Matt Harriet Scott are coming live from the Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter. We're on the set of Gringotts Bank. This is so exciting. It makes a change from being in the studio, doesn't it? The central bank of the wizarding world, run by goblins, and soon opening a branch near Watford. Harry Potter magic continues to cast its spell on enchanted fans worldwide, as well as seven books, eight films, Wizarding World theme parks, plays in London and Broadway. There is Warner Brothers Studio Tour. Set. This was our 2019 expansion, the Gringotts Banking Hall. Isn't it absolutely fabulous? All of these marble columns and the set was in storage. We've been holding on to this set to bring it out uh, later in our, in our life of this tour. We opened in 2012, of course, and we have a history of bringing out expansion sets as a marketing highlight to encourage new and repeat visits periodically uh, for the tour. So in 2015, we opened the Hogwarts Express on platform nine and three quarters. And then in 2017, we opened the Forbidden Forest. I used to be known as the Jungle Art Director because I did Greystoke, I did the Mission, and I seem to have a lot to do with trees throughout my career. So I think what I wanted to achieve with it is to learn from what, what had worked in all those previous circumstances and develop it further. The Forbidden Forest was always a creepy place and it's a great environment to have creatures in. And I think it's great that it's been introduced as somewhere that people can go around and experience a bit of that uncertainty. And as I said, in 2019, we opened Gringotts, and this is my personal favourite expansion. It is such a 
fabulous set. It's breathtaking. The columns were all in storage and the filmmakers came back to re-hand uh, paint all of this marbling effect across all the columns. And it's absolutely such an intricate and beautiful set. Occasionally you see the skill and the ability of all the creative departments really coming together to make something very beautiful and I think the Gringotts Bank sets are a wonderful example of that incredible breadth of skill. I'm so pleased that we kept as much as we did in storage and were able to bring it and put it in the tour. One of the best, really pleased. So we've got a history in the tour of having our marketing highlights through these expansions, of really encouraging additional new and repeat visits by the features that we run every school holiday and bank holiday across the year. But it's really our staff that make the tour. They are such amazing Harry Potter fans and they bring to life these fantastic sets and all of the props and costumes that we have from the original film series. The filmmakers help us keep everything looking film quality all the time and that helps to really have great pride from our staff in this amazing interactive and engaging experience. Well, we were having a fantastic year. We had all these new expansions in 2019, the new Gringotts expansion, the uh, new entrance, car parking, and our catering facilities. It was brilliant. We did well over two million visitors in 2019 as well. It was cracking. And then of course, what happened? COVID hit mid-March, and we ran a very, very uh, quick response, particularly as our company is based outside Los Angeles in the US and the COVID was actually moving quicker uh, there at that time. So we were very much being pulled into the feelings of the company um, about closing down in response to the COVID. So um, we were very quick. We shut down our Hollywood tour literally in one afternoon and then we started to work on the closure of the Studio Tour London. We shut on Monday the 16th of March, ahead of other attractions in the UK. But actually, as it turned out, only slightly, because most places were closed by the end of that week. And for us, following on, we have our shops at Platform 9 and 3 quarters. We closed our shops, we closed our warehouse, and finally our e-commerce operation. But imagine, uh, we are very, very heavy pre-book. And if you've ever tried to get a ticket here, you'll know that we pre-book out, you know, solidly three months in advance and many other tickets. And so we were left initially with the huge task of refunding and we refunded everybody who had a ticket while we were closed of refunding hundreds of thousands of tickets. So our job went straight into, into a technical uh, response to needing to refund tickets. The COVID time has been tough for everybody in the industry. And, you know, we were very keen to keep our staff training going. We had our staff furloughed. Uh, we had a management team continuing to work to make sure that we were putting everything in place for a very smooth reopening. Hello. We're looking forward to welcoming you back to Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, the making of Harry Potter. To help keep everyone safe, we've implemented a number of measures and changes to the studio. We were tour delighted to reopen the tour on the 20th of August with very limited numbers, of course, about 25% of our normal visitor numbers. But we really wanted something to welcome the fans back and to make a, make a big shout out on social media. So, welcome to the celebration of Slytherin. The celebration starts in the Great Hall with the Great Slytherin Feast and the silver and green banners. It's really impactful. I'm standing here in front of our new set, the Slytherin Common Room. We've always had the Gryffindor Common Room, the warm red of Gryffindor, but now we have this rather cold silver and, and very green set. Uh, production designer Stuart Craig carved the Slytherin set from stone to make it look like a prison cell. 
And of course, the set is underwater. If you look up in the in the uh, corner, the window, you can see the water behind the window, and it, it runs down the walls on the inside. This is a very cold, evil set for Slytherin. Please respect social distancing and follow any directional signs. Well, we've taken social distancing very seriously indeed. But one of our advantages was that we have had lots of the provisions in place to enable us to quickly turn, turn social distancing on. And one of them, of course, is our policy since we opened of pre-book only. So all our pre-booking was in place. And we pulse all of our visitors through our cinema experience. So it's very easy for us to control the number of people actually entering the tour at any one time. That's also a restriction to the numbers that we can take because of our social distancing at two metres. But it's working out really well for us and our customers are responding really, really positively. And our TripAdvisor reviews and other feedback shows that the way that we're managing social distancing and the way that it's controlled within the tour is very, very positive. all the safety measures in place. It makes me feel a lot more comfortable with everything going on and I can just enjoy myself as normal. And then the safety measures have been really good. Everything's been spaced out right from the first screening where they show us the video. Everybody's wearing a face mask. The sanitizers that has been kept everywhere we have been using continuously. It's all marked on the ground where you should go and the one-way systems. And it's a really good experience too. We haven't compromised any of the elements of the experience. You can still enjoy all of the features of the tour but it's actually really like a, a VIP experience. You know, you can get really up close to the sets. With a limited capacity you kind of get more of an intimate experience with the tour. I think it makes it more enjoyable for everyone as well. You get to stand yeah. there and you get to you take to in everything worry. in and you don't have to worry about other people getting you know, too close. There's a guide dog going on, obviously. We don't know how close we are to somebody. So coming here because of how it's laid out and there's minimal people allowed, it means you're a bit less worried about how close you're getting to people. Looking to the future and brighter times. I'm standing at the Hogwarts model Probably one of the most iconic parts of this tour experience. It's a very emotional set for many of our Harry Potter fans. Everything in this tour is original to the film series and it will always be the home of Harry Potter. The place where all the films were made and all the sets, the props and the costumes. What this tour has done is given us the opportunity to build on the success and we are really thrilled to announce that we are going to open a new tour in Tokyo, Japan in 2023. We've been working on the project for around two years, pulling together various locations, and we announced recently that we will be going to Toshimaen in Tokyo. The tour is going to be fabulous. It is all the best of this tour with the sets replicated by the original filmmakers so they will be 100% authentic to the filmmaking. Those sets will be enhanced with original props and costumes and we'll be adding a lot of cultural aspects as well, more engagement, interactivity and of course because the sets are being made we have the opportunity to bring in some really new exciting features and sets as well. So look out for more information on our great announcement of our new studio tour opening in Tokyo, Japan in 2023. Exit via the gift shop. Well, our visitors, by the time they reach our, our retail shop, they'll have spent uh, three to four hours usually immersed in Harry Potter within the wider experience of the tour. So they're ready for retail. Most of the product in this shop is only available in this tour in the UK. So it's very unique and very, very placed within the wizarding world, within Harry Potter's world. We expanded the shop in 2019 as part of our, our big tour expansion, and we're very pleased with how this set out works. Behind me, uh, you can see the wand table. Of course, the wand chooses the wizard, and you can go talk to the staff, test out the wands, feel them in your hand before you make your wand purchase. Every wizard must have a wand and a chocolate frog and some Bertie Bot beans. 
So as a company, we've actually got more retail presence now, and we purchased the Platform 9 and 3 quarters group a couple of years ago. And Platform 9 and 3 quarters key store is at King's Cross, of course, and you may well have seen the long queues at King's Cross to push the trolley through the wall. There's a completely unique product in that store. It's a very, very high quality, differentiated product. And while there's a lot of problems on the high street at the moment, it's a really challenging time. I do feel that shops that sell quality products with a differentiation behind their product development will do really well. And with that in mind, we have a very exciting new venture which will open in New York in 2021. We're opening a Harry Potter Wizarding World flagship store it's gonna be about 20,000 square foot. We're really, really excited about that store. It's gonna be everything really that we've learned about experiences from our running our visitor attractions and we're taking that into retail and we're going to do it really well. We're focused on the quality of the product. We're focused on extremely high standards of customer care, of high levels of engagement and interactivity around everything that's inside the shop, some very practical things right through to advanced technology, and also about innovation, product innovation. We always want to be at the front. And at the moment, you can see that a lot through our personalization. You can have your name embroidered on your robe, on your Hogwarts journal, and many other new exciting personalization opportunities that are coming forward. So we're very, very proud of our project in New York, and we hope that New York being a central tourist area, that by the time we open next year, everyone will be traveling again, and we'll see all our Harry Potter fans and tourists come to that shop. One aspect of our business that has been absolutely thriving since we reopened our e-commerce operation uh, towards the end of July, and actually e-commerce is something that we're running through the studio tour and through platform nine and three quarters group. We will look forward to consolidating it all in the future. But even now, our e-commerce operation with our own fulfillment center is running at about up about 80% on the same time last year. The Harry Potter films have such rich storytelling content that really feeds into our product range. And one of the most iconic products from Harry Potter is, of course, Butterbeer. We've been selling Butterbeer in the tour for years, but at the beginning of September, we launched our new bottled Butterbeer. product to take away for gifting and to enjoy butterbeer at home for the very first time. And these beautiful labels have been designed by Mina Lima, who are the designers from Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts. So from everybody here at Warner Brothers Studio Tour London, to all our colleagues and friends in the attractions industry, a butterbeer cheers. 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 Cheers.